This graph plots the actual and expected digital frequencies of first digits. The yellow line indicates the expected digital frequencies of the first digit, and the bars indicate the actual proportions of an observation. In this case, the actual data almost perfectly conforms to Benford's law. Auditors can test the authenticity of lists of numbers by comparing the actual and expected digital frequencies. The digit patterns of authentic numbers should confirm to the expected frequencies of Benford's law. In this graph, the white bars indicate the expected frequencies of Benford's law for the first digits. Bars with different colors indicate the proportion of actual data sets for the first digits. The actual data sets include numbers appearing on the front pages of newspapers observed by Benford, the 3,141 county populations from the 1990 U.S. Census noted by Nagrini, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average from 1990 through 1993 observed by Lay. From the graph, these data appear to follow Benford's law. The digit patterns of fraudulent data do not confirm to the expected frequencies of Benford's law. As with the previous graph, the white bars indicate the expected values from Benford's law for the first digits. Bars with different colors indicate the proportion of actual data sets for the first digits. The data sets include true tax data from 169,662 IRS model files by Nagrini, fraudulent tax data taken from a 1995 Kings County, New York District Attorney's Office study by Hill, and random guess data by Hill. The first digit distribution of true tax data confirms to Benford's law. However, fraudulent tax data does not follow Benford's law because some numbers are intentionally produced. Random guess data also does not follow Benford's law because some numbers are used repeatedly. In this graph, the digit 5 peaks in the fraudulent tax data, indicating that the actual proportion exceeds the Benford's Law predicted proportion. That means that an abnormal level of duplication for the first digit is created at the digit 5. Generally, most accounting data confirms to Benford's Law. Benford's Law can apply to list of numbers that describe the relative sizes of similar phenomena such as the market values, net incomes, or daily trading volumes of corporations listed on the New York Stock Exchange. If all the numbers in a list that confirmed a Benford's Law were multiplied by a non-zero constant, then the new list would also follow Benford's Law. For example, accounts receivable is the number of items sold multiplied by the price per item, and accounts payable is the number of items bought multiplied by the price per item. Benford's Law also can apply to transaction level data such as disbursements, sales, and expenses because the larger the number of transactions or items in the data set, the more accurate the analysis. Benford's Law also has been found to apply to many sets of financial data including income tax or stock exchange data, sales figures, and demographics. Most accounting data confirm to Benford's Law, but there are some types of data that do not confirm to Benford's Law. Benford's Law does not apply to numbers that are influenced by human thought, such as ATM cash withdrawals, supermarket prices, New York Stock Exchange stock quotes, or prices set at psychological thresholds, such as $1.99. Assigned numbers generated by uniform distribution, such as personal identification numbers, telephone numbers, car license plate numbers, social security numbers, zip codes, bank account numbers, check numbers, or invoice numbers. Numbers with maximums, including income tax deductions that have an upper bound, such as child care expenses or certain categories of moving expenses. Numbers with minimums, including hourly wage rates limited by minimum wage, or the revenue of the top 100 companies, where the top 100 companies are ranked according to revenues. And numbers with trends, including time series of salaries, sales, account balances, and so forth. 
This is an example of data not conforming to Benford's law. The pink line indicates the expected digital frequencies of the first digit and the red bar indicates the actual frequencies of pension identifiers. Pension identifiers are assigned numbers and most of them start with number one, so it does not conform to Benford's law. This is another example of data not conforming to Benford's law. The pink line indicates the expected digital frequencies of the first digit and the red bar indicates the actual frequencies of retirement age. Retirement age has a minimum and maximum limit, so most of the numbers start between 5 and 6. Retirement age also does not conform to Benford's law. To look for unusual patterns in audit data sets, five major digit tests are available. The first digit test and the second digit test are high level tests used for data conformity or reasonableness. The first two digits test is a more focused test identifying data authenticity for further review and can be used to select audit targets for a preliminary review. The first three digits test is a highly focused test used to select audit samples and to identify number duplication. The last digit test is used to identify invented, overused, or rounded numbers. There are some possible practical application for Benford's Law with accounts payable data. Accounts payable data are a favorite target of the digital analysis technology. This graph is the first two digits of an accounts payable file from a NASDAQ listed software company. The data sets generated in business are natural, so the expected frequency of their digits should follow Benford's Law. However, most invented numbers are unlikely to follow Benford's law showing the abnormal level of digital frequencies. In this graph, 10, 30, 49, and other two-digit combinations have positive peaks. Because human choices are not random, numbers intentionally produced are used repeatedly and alter the distribution of the data set. Therefore, auditors should understand the tendency of fraudsters who start with small amounts and then increase the amount. In addition, the amounts just below a limit, the rounded amounts, and repeated digit patterns should be carefully reviewed through digit test. The conformity of a data set to Benford's Law does not necessarily imply authenticity. However, nonconformity to Benford's Law raises some level of suspicion. Auditors should be careful that certain types of fraud will not be detected using Benford's Law analysis. In summary, Benford's Law is the phenomena that describes why lower digits more frequently appear in the first position of a number. Benford's Law has been studied by Simon Newcomb, Benford, and Nigrini. The Benford's Law formula best describes the first digit phenomenon. This mathematical finding is useful to detect fraudulent transactions in accounting data because fraudulent data does not follow the Benford's Law distribution. Most accounting and financial data conforms to Benford's Law. However, numbers influenced by human thoughts, assigned numbers, and numbers with limits or trends do not conform to Benford's Law. After selecting data, you will apply Benford's Law. There are five distinct tests that could be used to detect fraudulent data. These include first digit test, second digit test, first two digits test, first three digits test, and last digit test.